Hi guys, my name's Andy, and in this lesson I'm taking you guys through what a key is in music, why it's useful to you, and also I'm going to be talking about the key of G. So a key in music is a way of knowing which chords go together, and it can be seen as a family of chords or a palette of chords, like a painter's palette. And it's also a way of knowing which melodic notes are going to work over those chords. Um, now as a quick kind of guide as to a really quick inclination of what the key of a song might be, the key of the song is normally the first chord, the last chord, and the most common chord that crops up in your song or chord sequence. So if, for example, my song is in the key of G, G will probably start the chord sequence. It might not end every time, but it, the song may end on a G. And G will also probably be the commonest chord in the song, or happen for the most amount of time. But none of those things have to be the case for a song to be in the key of G. In fact, a song could be kind of in the key of G, but not even have a G chord in it. And how is that the case? Well, it's because that's not the reason a song's in that key. It just tends to be that that sounds good and that gets done the most. Um, but it's the other chords in the song that actually dictate what the key is. And uh, those chords are, when we take the key of G as an example, because G is a very guitar-friendly key. If you've been playing guitar for a number of months or weeks, you'll, you'll know that probably already. Um, we have G as our first chord, A minor. I'm just going to be demoing these chords, but I will have these chord sh uh, shapes available to, to view in the lesson notes that accompany this lesson. So this second one's A minor. Then we have a B minor, which I'm playing a B minor 7, kind of like this, um, so that uh, the majority of people can play it. There's another way of playing a B minor, which is kind of correct, but it would be the bar chord way of doing it. So I'm giving you guys the easier option of, of either of them. Uh, we have a C, a D major as well, and finally an E minor. There are other chords that will crop up in a song that's in the key of G, or there might even be fewer. A song might just stick to the major chords, G, C, or D. And if we take the song example Brown Eyed Girl by Van Morrison, the main chord sequence in that song is G, to a C, G, and back to D again. And the only other chord that happens in the whole song is going to be an E minor. So we have these common chords that happen, and in that chord sequence, G, C, G, and D, G is the first one and the most common. And G would end the song if it didn't just fade out. Um, so that's just as a quick inclination of what a key is and how it gets used. But why is that useful to a beginner or improving guitarist? Well, if you know the key of a song, you'll know how to play over it for one, and we'll be covering that in the in a later lesson in this uh, group of five for True Fire. But also, you can just start to be one of those guys who can just pick up the guitar and play. You can play chords that sound good together rather than them being totally random, and you put those with the strumming patterns that we've covered in the first two lessons, and you're coming up with something that, that sounds good. And it doesn't have to be that one song that you've played to death or another song that's kind of difficult and you're not yet comfortable with. And we're kind of learning the mechanics, the underlying workings of why things sound good, why, why certain chord sequences get used over and over again. And there are those well-trodden chord sequences, and I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, but the theory goes that you could pick any of those chords that I've just listed, G, A minor, B minor 7, or just a standard B minor, C, D, and E minor. You could put them in any order, and it will sound good. That's not to say that any other chord that you would throw in there would sound bad. It just might, if you went from totally random chord to totally random chord and just kept going, you're probably going to run out of chords and it's probably going to sound a bit random. But this is kind of working out which chords fit together really well as a starting point for you to experiment with and then see those things happen in real songs, but also see how they're twisted to make it a bit more interesting. So 
Um, as I say, we have the common chord sequences that get used an awful lot, and it's best to start off with a bar of each chord for now. And um, most songs have four bars that tend to get repeated. Brown Eyed Girl, that I mentioned a second ago, is a great example. Bar of G, a bar of C, bar of G, and then a bar of D. Put it to the first most common strumming pattern that we looked at in lesson one, and we get. Not only some nice sounding guitar, it is Brown Eyed Girl. Okay, but take the chord sequence on its own, and it doesn't have to be that song. I could change the chords, the uh, strumming pattern, uh, to the to the other one that we were doing, the second most common strumming pattern ever, and it sounds different, and it sounds like different songs. And that's what we're going to be doing with my second recommended chord sequence, which I'll uh, have written on uh, the lesson notes for this as well. But that's going to be a bar of G, a bar of D, a bar of E minor, and then a bar of C. They're the four most common chords in the key of G in the most common order. And these you can do an awful lot of songs with as well. Uh, I'm going to go for the second most common strumming pattern ever to give us a little bit more time on each chord. So that would be one and two and a three and four and a. And it's best to take those four chords and just repeat them because that's what real songs do. And. Um, if you haven't done already, I really recommend you checking out uh, the Axis of Awesome's fourth chord song where they take those four chords that I've just played and just go through about a hundred songs, just playing like the chorus of each or one line of each song and all the melodies fit over that same chord sequence. But here we're looking at the mechanics underneath that and as I say, in the fourth lesson in this series of five, we're going to be covering how to play over it with quite an easy scale and start you guys kind of improvising and making melodies over it. So this is perfect kind of jamming material for any genre to be turned into any kind of music because this is just, it's the same chords that can get used in so many different styles of music and it depends what you do with them. So we're just doing the the most common things so it's going to sound like at the moment standard pop song stuff but if you have for example rock riffs that you've done before that maybe have a, for example you add a little bit of muting with that same chord sequence you can make it sound a little bit more kind of classic rock so And that strumming pattern will also be written out on the lesson notes to this lesson. But as I say, we've got that common order. So common order number one, G, C, G, D for a bar of each. And then your four chord song order for a bar of each, G, D, E minor and C. And as you can play for a bar of each with any strumming pattern you want to go for and it will always work. You can swap out any of those chords with any of the ones from uh, from the ones that are in the key of G that I've listed earlier in this video and it will still work and guess what even the notes we're going to play over that in a later in the next video it will still work even if we change the order now of course if it's all kind of planned out beforehand and you're really familiar with the sound of these chords and you've done this before you can tie together the melody with the chords a little more but in the early days the theory goes that it will just work and it needs to be experimented with and it needs to be tried um, out. So we've got those two recommended chord sequences and from there I'd like you guys to write out four bars, so five lines down with four spaces in between them on a sheet of paper. Don't worry, I've done this for you already, it's in the lesson notes. Um, and we're going to be writing down one of those chords from the recommended one in each bar. You can put two in each bar if you want, but that's going to make it kind of harder for your changes. So it's up to you how challenging you want to make your chord sequence. 
You know, some people might want to stay away from the B minor because it's new to them. And that's cool because it doesn't always get used. Um, but you can do any order and it will kind of still sound good together. It will still work as a guitar. But if you stick, you, what you might find is if you stick to those minor chords really, really often, it, the song tends to sound a little bit sad. And if you don't start on the G, it maybe doesn't sound like it's started or finished. It's got a, it's got a weird flow. And that's when you can come back to those two uh, recommended chord sequences that I've given you. And you can f see and hear how it, how they do flow and how you could um, use any melodies or far more melodies over the top of them and it would work um, a lot better. So as I say, I really encourage you to take the pre-made sheets that I've got available on the website and write um, one chord from each of those, each of the palettes that's available and have a go at playing it. You can just do this in your mind and try and remember which chords they are and go from each of them. But if you write it down, you can kind of reflect on how that went and then have another go at, at changing it slightly. And you'll remember what you've done and you'll probably play it better. And then over those chord sequences that you create, we're then in lesson four going to be playing over those and getting used to this idea of improvising. But we tend to have the rhythm guitar down first to make the improvising idea uh, work a little better. And as I say, with those chord sequences, play with any strumming pattern you know, or you can use the two most common strumming patterns that were in the previous video. That's it for le this lesson. Hope that is something that works for you and that you see the benefit of, because there's huge leaps of benefits that can be felt when you, uh, when you continue to go down this road. Other than that, I hope to see you again and check out the future videos.